Welcome. In front of me is an Realme GT Neo 3T and today I'll show you a couple of tweaks and tricks you can do on this phone. So, let's get started by opening up our settings where we'll find, well, all of them. So we're gonna start off with the personalized personalization section. So in here you have a bunch of settings for just customizing the look and feel of your home screen. That will include things like wallpaper always on display along with icons which allows you to choose shapes along with icon packs if you have some installed. It shows you right here how they will look like along with a couple additional tweaks to them so you have like the R plus icons. So you can see some not all change just a little bit. You have size of them. You can show or hide the name. Obviously you can also make it smaller if you wanted to. You can select apply and there we go. We also have the quick settings which are this section right here. And you can customize the shapes of them. And I believe we also should be able to customize the color. Font not here. Oh, there we go, color. Probably under the thing that is literally called color. Um, so anyway, as you can see, we have a bunch of uh, default looking uh, toggles right here. So these just uh, show you different sections on the phone that have different colors by uh, with the default section. And then if you change it to something else, you can see what it will affect it or in what kind of color and way. And you can also set some neutral. So all of them are just monochrome basically, or one that I prefer to pick, which will be uh, wallpaper color picking. So this will base it on the wallpaper that you have enabled. And now this one is primarily blue, so it's not really working too well. So I'm going to quickly change it just so we can see this working a little bit better. Let's pick something a little bit more interesting. I'm not going to lie, these are all kind of boring. Let's go with this one. Let's try now. And as you can see, it did change it and it's a little bit more diverse. So we have a little bit of brown, grayish, um, some like really, really uh, crimson color almost. So yeah, uh, and obviously if I pull down the notifications, you can see this affected right here. Now on the camera, camera isn't really picking up the colors too well. They're a little bit more vibrant than they look like on the camera, so keep that in mind. Now, in my opinion, this is probably the best way to set up the colors. It does a pretty good job at it, and it looks genuinely pretty good. Now, anyway, let's move over to the next options, which will be under the home screen and lock screen. Now, one option right here that I personally prefer over all the other ones is the... Um, where was it? Oh, there we go. Swipe uh, down on home screen. Now by default it's set to global search. I don't really care for that. I do prefer to have notifications. So now when you swipe down, it just pulls down all your notifications and you don't need to reach all the way to the top to, to just drop it down. Pretty nice. And obviously you can also extend the same way. So that's one of the things that I personally prefer uh, to have enabled all the time. Now another thing in here is the uh, pull or icon pull down gesture and what this allows you to do is quickly launch applications uh, that might be a little bit further from reach. So as an example if you're just uh, using the phone in one handed, so I'm just going to simulate that, it will be very difficult. I would need to literally shift the entire position of the way I hold the phone. But with this option I can just kind of do, which one is it, let's try that, Whoop. come on. Worked before. Did I not enable it? It is enabled. There we go. As you can see, it just pulls them all towards your finger and it's pretty easy to just kind of pick one from here. It's literally all under your fingertip. And then when you let go, it automatically opens up the application.
it looks like you need to be straight like in a corner otherwise it just won't work but with the case it's a little bit more difficult because the case does have like this kind of like more protruding bezels so it makes it a little bit more challenging but still if you're really like adamant about trying this out you can do it especially if you don't have a case on now moving on to the next option it's going to be in the display section there we go display and brightness it's going to be the dark mode now we have set by default to light mode but if you prefer something a little bit more darker uh, more toned down especially during the night time there it is now we do also have the option to auto switch it uh, which will allow you to have it set so it automatically switches based on the time of day and in here when you enable this it also allows you to select a custom one or sunset to sunrise so you can choose one of those and have it so during the night time uh, you won't be getting flashbanged by your phone in this pure uh, bright mode which i personally do prefer to have enabled but during the daytime as probably most of you already figured out dark mode is a little bit harder to see especially if your display doesn't get really bright uh, then in this case uh, it will automatically switch to light mode instead which i would argue is a little bit easier to see during the like sunlight and moving on to couple additional settings under the display uh, section we have some image video and uh, video motion enhancer and color enhancer so all of these allow you to just improve the image quality of different uh, things like images videos and so on uh, so i would probably recommend turning them all on and see if you like it uh, now i know it's not very visible right here probably if they would have actually moved this a little bit more to the middle so you can see the actual sunflower like split in half instead of well this kind of dumb example then this would have been better but what it does i believe is just adds a little bit more sharpness to the image so it's nothing special but still in certain cases it might improve your image quality a little bit and if the image is already pretty sharp um like for instance like 1080p or 1440p it shouldn't probably do much to it not not much visible difference so keep that in mind but with video color enhancer uh, no matter what the actual resolution of the image or video you're looking at uh, you will probably see this it does make the uh, image a little bit more saturated uh, it makes it look a little bit more bright and uh, removes a little bit of the shadow as you can see there is the on option and this is the like when this will be off so you can just turn it on it only affects uh, uh, so yeah what it says is basically turns uh, standard definition content into uh, HDR though keep in mind this is like fake HDR and then we have video motion enhancer so uh, this just tries to remove jitterness from the video making it look uh, much smoother now you don't really get to no, yeah, there's the line i guess but you can see this one is kind of like jumping well this is just completely nicely smooth so this one i would most certainly enable uh, because if you ever encounter these kind of like uh, youtube videos something like that where it wasn't processed too well or maybe it just looks just weirdly where it's jumping around turning this on might completely remove that problem so there we go now this would conclude the tweaks and the tricks that I want to share with you and if you found this video helpful don't forget to hit like, subscribe and thanks for watching.